For many Papua New Guineans, Sam Mekere Morauta will be remembered as the straight-shooting politician and the reformist prime minister whose work came to be appreciated more than a decade later. Up until the 1990s, Mekere Morauta's public life was rather low-key. He thrived behind the scenes, helping to develop, shape and implement important government policies. He was the first graduate in economics from the University of Papua New Guinea and with it came important responsibilities, both for his people and the country. In 1971, he began a career in the public service as a research officer with the Department of Labor. A year later, he took up a job as economist in the Office of Economic Advisor. When Papua New Guinea became self-governing in 1973, the government of Chief Minister Michael Sumare sought out its best and brightest to help run the young democracy. At 27, Mekere Morauta was thrust into a position of power and responsibility when he was appointed Secretary for Finance, a post he held for nine years. He was always an important influencer in the banking and financial sector of Papua New Guinea. In 1983, he was appointed managing director of the Papua New Guinea Banking Corporation, an important PNG institution. He held the position for another nine years until his upward transition to a new job as the governor of the Bank of Papua New Guinea. It was in this short stint as central bank governor that he shot to prominence as an outspoken enemy of corruption that was infecting PNG government institutions. Sir Julius Chan was Prime Minister then and in a foreign documentary on corruption in Papua New Guinea, Mekere Morauta spoke out and was removed one year into the job. I think it would be fair for me to describe corruption as both systemic and systematic systemic because it has invaded the whole processes of policy making and decision making it has drowned the whole system so it's systemic you look at the economic and social indicators and it's quite clear that Papua New Guinea was on its knees um, he came straight in and instituted a whole series of reforms that um, changed the face of Papua New Guinea and sustained the economy and society. In 2000, the Mekere government introduced sweeping reforms in the finance and banking sector. He introduced legislative reforms that strengthened the superannuation funds and banks effectively eliminating much of the political interference that these institutions had long been burdened with. Through the reforms, Nest Fund and other super funds, which were on the brink of collapse, were revived and strengthened. We will remember Simekere for the strong political leadership that he displayed in 2000 for driving uh, superannuation reforms in Papua New Guinea. Uh, if he hadn't uh, intervened uh, at the time, I think the funds who were laden with uh, problems, with deficiencies, uh, lack of governance, uh, strong political interference uh, would have been in a different state today. So to Sir Makere, uh, the superannuation in industry owes him a lot. As a proponent of um, implementing the reforms that Sir Makere instituted in 2000, the superannuation industry uh, is very strong uh, today. Uh, members, contributors to the funds, NAS Fund, uh, Number One Super, Comrade Trustee, uh, their prede predecessor organizations, uh, the National Poverty Fund, Public Officers Superannuation Fund, and the Defense Force Retirement Fund, have strongly benefited from the governance uh, reforms that were part and parcel of the superannuation legislation. So we owe Sir McCary a lot for those reforms. Shamin Poreyambeb, National MTV News.